girl let's talk crime so if you are new to my channel welcome and if you are already subscribed and have seen me over here here and there welcome back so if you don't know by now i have i did like make a vlog um and in that vlog i talked about shutting down my podcast i'll probably actually upload this video per first um so i am shutting my podcast down because i want to focus solely on youtube i feel like i'm too inconsistent um with being on multiple platforms and in order for me to give the best content i want to make it consistent and make it quality and for that to happen um i need to have some order in my life so um i am stopping the podcast and now i will be over here on youtube full time as well as tiktok um still and then of course i will still be posting on facebook but over here will be the more longer um versions as opposed to tiktok where there is a three minute time limit so yeah i am so appreciative for the support on all the platforms so if you would like to continue supporting me i would be honored if you subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time i upload a video so tonight we are going to be talking about the case of the Stainer brothers and this is a very interesting and twisted story. Harry and Stephen Stainer come from the same family. They are brothers however they had a completely different impact on the world. Stephen Gregory Stainer was born on April 18th 1965 to his parents Delbert and Kay Stainer in California which was about two hours outside of Yosemite National Park. Stephen had four siblings, three sisters and an older brother by the name of Carrie said that Stephen and Carrie were pretty close and he always looked out for his younger brother Stephen and people would consider Carrie a nice guy. Come with me to December 4th, 1972. Stephen is now seven years old and he is walking home from school on highway 140 when he encounters a man by the name of Kenneth. Parnell. 41 year old Kenneth Parnell was born on September 26, 1931, in Texas to his parents, Cecil and Mary Parnell. He, his mother, and three siblings moved from Texas to California. His father abandoned the family when Kenneth was around six years old and he was in and out of a lot of mental institutions. So in his early 20s, he was arrested for sodomizing a young boy after pretending to be a deputy with a badge that he purchased at a store. He was only given a four year prison sentence for this crime. About 10 years later in his 30s, he gets prison time for armed robbery in Utah. Kenneth claims that he had married three different times, but records only show two marriages. And he also had two daughters. He worked at the Yosemite Lodge, which was about two hours away from where the Stainer family stayed. And on December 4th, 1979, he and his coworker, Irvin Murphy, were driving when they seen Stephen walking from home along Highway 140. Kenneth pulls over in his white Buick that he and Irvin are in. He then gets out and uses the payphone. He then tells seven-year-old Steven that he had just talked to his parents and that they said that they did not want him anymore and it worked. Steven got in the car with Kenneth and Irvin and when Steven did not return home from school, his parents wasted no time reporting him missing. So they searched for Steven everywhere and unfortunately he was not located. And this really affected Carrie as you would assume that it would. Kenneth and Steven, who was now known as Dennis Parnell, traveled around California for years. And what I found so odd about this case is that Kenneth enrolled Stephen in school and he did very well. He really excelled. According to former classmates, he was spunky and he seemed normal. And I believe that this had everything to do with Stephen believing that he was adopted and that nothing was wrong. But the nightmare that would happen each night was proof that Kenneth was not some good guy that rescued him from a broken home. After seven years of Stephen enduring Kenneth's abuse, 
he is now 14 years old and Kenneth realizes that he can no longer control Stephen in the way that he has been controlling him and now he sets his target on another little boy. February 1980, with the help of another local kid, Kenneth abducts five-year-old Timothy White as he is walking home from school. For the next two weeks, Stephen watches five-year-old Timothy suffer and be assaulted every single day in the exact same way that he was. He made it up in his mind that he would not allow Timothy to endure the abuse that he went through. On March 1st, 1980, Stephen waited for Kenneth to go to work and he fled with Timothy and hitchhiked to his hometown. Now, Timothy was struggling and could not remember where he lived, especially because it was dark outside. Stephen felt the next best thing to do was to take him to a police station because he knew at least there he would be safe. Stephen walked into the police station to explain who Timothy was and that is when he began being questioned by the police asking him who he was. That is when Stephen said the most powerful words, I know my first name is Stephen. This line would go on to become the title of a movie and a book about his abduction. Stephen became a hero. He saved a child from this sick, sick man and it touched the hearts of so many. Now he did struggle a bit when he was adjusting to home. He was smoking, drinking, doing whatever he wanted. And now there was structure, there was rules and there were siblings. He had a really difficult time in high school where he was bullied for being kidnapped and assaulted. And if that wasn't enough pain, he also had to face Kenneth, his abductor and rapist in court. Stephen would go on to marry and have two children of his own. His 20s were starting to look up for him. He had joined a local church. He was helping other children who had endured similar traumatic experiences. September 16th, 1989, 24-year-old Stephen Stainer was on his way home from work when he was killed in a hit and run accident while on his motorcycle. The driver received a three month sentence. So what happened to Kenneth? It's like, we know he got life. We know he's right where he belongs, right? No. So Kenneth Parnell was convicted of kidnapping and false imprisonment of Stephen and Timothy. He was never convicted of the sexual assault and he was given seven years, a seven year sentence. And he only served five years. He got out and he did it again. He was caught up in a sting operation where he had attempted to purchase a four-year-old. He was then sent back to prison and he died in 2008 from natural causes. So what's up with Carrie? Well, Carrie struggled too. He wasn't a fan of all the attention that his brother Stephen was getting once he came home after being abducted and kept captive for so long. Their relationship was greatly impacted from the eight years that they were not together. Carrie was battling his own demons. He had multiple breakdowns, especially after Stephen died, as well as the loss of another family member. In 1997, Carrie got a job as a handyman at the Cedar Lodge, which was a few miles from Yosemite National Park, a place that Carrie absolutely loved. It was his calm, his place to find peace. In 1999, Carrie had been at the lodge for around two years when a woman named Carol, her daughter, Julie, and a friend came to stay. Now, Carrie had convinced them that, that he needed to fix a leak and once entering the room, he sexually assaulted Julie and her friend, Sylvina, and then he killed all three. Several weeks later, the bodies of all three women were discovered an arrest was made and unfortunately it was not Carrie, the person responsible for the crime. Five months later, Carrie kills again, 26 year old Joy Armstrong. This time Carrie left a significant amount of evidence. He was apprehended and confessed to the murder of Miss Armstrong and then the murders of Carrie, Julie and Sylvina. Immediately, he said that he wanted a movie made about him. I mean, because after all, there was a movie about his brother, Stephen. 
in 2002, he was sentenced to death row. And as of today, the 60 year old remains on death row. Some people wonder if the abduction of his brother had any effect on his crimes. But an interesting statement that Kerry made after he was arrested is that he had been fantasizing about murdering women since he was seven. He is four years older than Steven, so all of this happened long before the abduction. And we can't forget about Timothy White, the five-year-old that Steven saved from years of abuse. His return home was a lot better than Steven's. He was a pallbearer at Steven's funeral and publicly forgave the teenager who snatched him for Kenneth, saying that he too was a victim of Kenneth's. Timothy goes on to become a deputy sheriff. He was married with two children and like Steven, he also helped other children who had gone through exactly what he had been through. And when Timothy White turned 35 years old, he passed away. He died from a pulmonary embolism. How tragic. That was an, a, a really just twisted case where something so different had really impacted, you know, the world in different ways. And it all came from the same root, from the same family. So thank you for watching. I am really excited to get back focused on YouTube. You can follow me on TikTok at Hey Girl Let's Talk Crime, Facebook, Instagram, Hey Girl Let's Talk Crime. If you have a case suggestion, that is linked in the description. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.